This is DJ Star Sage. Welcome to the far away nearby. This is episode 20, a sci fi road trip. Woo! And I am joined by a very special guest. And we'll get around to that in just a moment here. And we are waiting uh, for the Duchess Sue. Her chariot should be arriving any time now. The majority of today's episode is going to be a walk down memory lane, or at least revisiting a road trip I had just last weekend. It was a little of this. And it also was a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then to to chop it all off, it was also a little bit of this. So, mysterious guest, who do we have in the chat room? Well, uh, at the moment, we have a, a big fan. Oh, wait a minute. George is here. Woohoo! George. I think possibly maybe George from Atlanta. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But it uh, could very well be, or perhaps a different George. George, are you George from Atlanta? Dude, yes, he's George from Atlanta. We have an audience, folks. Excellent. Today we are going to talk about a sci-fi road trip adventure. Now, we are still awaiting the Duchess Sue to arrive, and normally we talk about our peaks and valleys, which are the high points and low points of our week. Now, of course, uh, our special guest is multi-talented and multi-personality. Oops, did I say that? <laughs> Let's just uh, stick with multi-personality. That's okay, good... that, that seems best. So I'll go ahead and talk to you for just a few moments here about how my week was. So, well, let's see. Let's talk about the high point of my week. I'll uh, I'll give you a little hint about it, anyways, because I'm going to be talking about it most of the of the um, episode here. I had a very nice uh, trip out of town last weekend. I enjoyed myself. I had a long weekend with my husband and our special guest. And me, yes, uh, as you might have guessed by now, we have Mister Toppy Smelly with us. No. How do, how do. So, um, yeah, the high point of my week was having had a long weekend and having to come back to work and going back to my first day of work. Um, well, I could say that that was a low point, but it's not the low point. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah. Well, unfortunately... As things go, I have an old jalopy, and ironically, I was just thinking the other day, you know, I just had one of those reminders that I had a special memory or an anniversary of a special memory, Yeah, and that special memory was six years ago, I got my car. Oh no, you have car troubles. Yeah, well... And the funny thing about it, well, maybe it's not so much funny as it is ironic, is that um, I was just remembering that in addition to that six years ago I'd gotten this car, um, I was facing a problem that I had just fixed with my last car, which coincidentally was my first car. I know. Oh. Yeah, I'm late to the game. I didn't get my license until I was 27. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but anyways, I replaced the horn on my first car, and then I coincidentally shortly thereafter got into a little fender bender. You see, I was um, 
I was trying to make my way to work on a wintry day, and I hit a patch of ice that six years ago, and lo and behold, I hit a tree after I spun out. Those darn trees, they always get in the way. I know. It's, they. I wish they would learn better dance moves. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I noticed that my car was having trouble with the horn recently. And I thought, well, that's not um, out of character for the wintry weather of the Northeast. I figured it would eventually start working again on its own. But for whatever reason... Um, I decided to take my car in to do its regular oil change, and my mechanic decided to tell me I wouldn't bother if I were you. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's the worst kind of news to get from a mechanic. Yeah, he um he basically gave me a laundry list of things to get fixed, and he thought it was a lost cause because I did tell him that I've been anticipating getting a different car in the near future, but I wasn't quite ready to do it just yet. So we're going to piecemeal it, and we're going to do a little here and a little there. But of course, as anyone would tell you that has anybody in their life that can actually be handy with um, mechanical things, they near usually want at least twice the price of what it would cost to fix yourself. No. So luckily, my other half, Billy. <gasps> oh, Billy. <laughs> I, we, I need to get him a superhero costume or something because uh, he's not only good with his hands with a, the hammer and nails, oh, but, but uh, <laughs> he's okay. also good with uh, figuring out cars. So um, we're going to have a, a, a short list of repairs to take care of one at a time. But uh, hopefully these will be the last, and I'll be able to um, make it to get by for a little bit of time before I'm ready for the next car. So that was the high and low of my week. Um, and another little bit of high on there was in our last episode I talked about Billy and I were uh, going on diets together. And the long and short of it is, after two weeks now, I have lost approximately five pounds. Whoa. Yeah. So Impressive. Impressive. Uh, I am just excited because um, I was always a hefty kid in high school. I wore a size 36 jeans and at my junior prom. And when I turned 30, I lost a bunch of weight, and I got down to my skinniest. I bought a size 34 pair of jeans at Old Navy, of all places, but I got to wear them for all of two months before I was too big again. So, um, well, without further ado, we'll go on and talk about our little adventure here. So, um, it looks like, actually, Sue may be trying to join us. I'm going to send her another invite. That would be the Duchess Sue kids. Oh, uh, DJ. Mm -hmm. uh, we now have uh, Gavin in the chat room as well. Excellent. Welcome, sir. And uh, George uh, just said he was once in a size 34, and he says that didn't last long for him either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just look the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So, well, um, over the weekend, we had a lovely little time in the fair, the suburbs of the fair city of Baltimore. So, uh, the husband, Billy, and I decided it was time to get out of town. And who better to invite than our resident Pride 48er, Toppy? Oh, and I am so glad you thought of me because this never would have run across my radar uh, without you guys notifying me, and uh, I'm so glad you did. Yeah, I we were glad to have had you. It's there's a rarely a time that's more exciting than seeing somebody else's first time at an event like this. It's a little like Christmas. You know, you, you, you have your excitement when you were a kid growing up and opening all the presents. And then when you become an adult and maybe have your own kids or nieces or nephews, then the excitement becomes 
enjoying seeing those kids and remember like that with introducing somebody to going to a convention. So I was really happy that we were able to bring you and that you had a good time. Oh, I had a fabulous time. And uh, I got to tell you, folks, uh, DJ and Billy, really, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on his little shoe here, (laughs) Uh, but honestly, they took care of me with so much consideration and um, they, they just really looked out for me and they, they kind of made the weekend all about me. It was all about what I wanted to do and what I wanted to attend at the convention. And I really appreciate that. So thank you very much uh, to you and, and Billy. Oh, thanks. It was our pleasure. So, Toppy, I think you had told us uh, on our way down that you have been to other conventions before. Now, of course, those of you who've had the pleasure of attending Vegas, of course, uh, saw you there before. But what other kinds of conventions or conferences have you been to? Well, uh, this is kind of unusual, but once in my nerdy McNerd pass, <laughs> I used to be involved in magic, but not the occult. Anyone <laughs> would think it was the occult. Uh, stage magic, sleight of hand, David Copperfield, uh, David Blaine, that kind of thing. Oh. And I, this is when I was in junior high school and high school. And I would take the opportunities that I found. Uh, when magic conventions would be held in surrounding cities like Syracuse or Rochester. And I went to those. I usually roped in a friend, and I would go, with my parents' permission, of course, uh, to attend these, and we would uh, book a room. And usually it was uh, a Saturday and Sunday affair. And very much like any other convention, this convention would have dealers, and in this case, it would be dealers of magic paraphernalia. Ooh. And uh, that's always exciting. If you're, if you're a magician, uh, to look at new paraphernalia uh, that you could use in your crazy, wacky act. And, uh, and then this, these were tremendous opportunities. First and foremost, because part of a convention is that they usually have instructional seminars or demonstrations by particularly good magicians. And so I was able to, and uh, I'd be able to learn things from Mm -hmm. semi-pros and uh, discover things that uh, were very interesting to me as a burgeoning magician. Uh, Hi there. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Speaking of the magician's assistant, we have the Duchess Sue. Out of the box. Can you hear me? Yeah, so I, I think you had mentioned before on your own show, Toppy, that growing up, didn't you receive a magic kit? Oh, my goodness. Oh, that wonderful magic kit. <clears throat> my parents had gotten me several of these over the years, and they reached me at a young age. And th- these were wonderful, wonderful things. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, to... Uh, to get these and then learn the little tricky tricks and uh, like i hit here's one dj now can you imagine me as this little bitty kid and i'd have a cardboard cage a cardboard bird cage Mm -hmm. well because these were kind of cheap magic kits and (laughs) i'd have a cardboard uh, bird cage and there'd be a little cardboard uh, bird in the cage and I'd, I'd put a, uh, a, a partition down in front of the bird. Mm-hmm. And when I pulled it back, the bird had vanished. Ooh. The cardboard bird had vanished. Anyways, I had great fun with those kits. And uh, it, it, interest, it helped to introduce me into... Uh, into the world of magic. And then I just started collecting magic books like crazy. Oh, cool. I still have them there. I, I just love them. And to this day, I still collect instructional magic books and I just like reading them. 
even though you know i i don't i don't pick up a deck of cards anymore and you know <clears throat> try to do anything clever uh i still like i still like reading it would be like if you were a cook and you enjoyed reading the cookbooks mm -hmm. and that's the way i am with uh, magic books i just like reading them and uh yeah that was a big part of my life uh, way back then, and uh, and I did it all through <laughs> the worst bouts of stage fright ever. I was really a horrible magician <laughs> because I had stage fright, <laughs> and uh, I, I learned eventually that uh, it was much better to study. Oh my! What oh, here's my dove. <laughs> I just I just produced a dove out of thin air, folks. <laughs> and <laughs> anyways, it, the thing is, I learned that I wasn't such a great performer, but I could still enjoy magic as a student, and uh, so it was all good. Now, didn't you also say that you had been to a comic convention? Maybe. Yeah, I uh, right here in Pickle Hollow, we had a uh, our school. In junior high, we had a lot of folks, including myself, who were really into comic books. And a couple people from Cromwell would come down. I'm back. Oh, hi. <laughs> but you were saying that you'd gone to yes. a comic convention. Indeed, yes. I was actually a founding member of the Pickle Hollow comic convention. Mm-hmm. Which still goes on today, all these years later. Ooh. So how long ago was that? Jeepers, that, I think we started around 1976. Oh, boy. So that's why you said you were a founding member, of course. Right. Hmm. Only. So um, so you were, you were just a little over a young man and into a young adult then. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, I got to tell you, DJ, it was quite an honor. I got to be uh, the uh, treasurer for one year. Mm -hmm. It was an elected post. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, you know, I got to be the treasurer. Anyways, it, it was a lot of fun. And, of course, by now, you know, many people have taken charge over organizing that convention here in Pickle Hollow over the years. And, uh, you know, I don't even know the people now that are involved in it. Yeah. And I keep saying one well, of these years, I'm going to go back. if you plug them in. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, it would be, it's kind of funny, folks. Oh. We can see the Duchess on video. Can you hear Frank us, Duchess? I can. Toppy and I were just discussing his earlier convention experiences and yeah. uh, yes. we went on a weekend road trip, and we'll have you uh, share some of your convention experiences okay. here in a little bit. So you were uh, you were quite a, well. You were a young adult when you got into that, and that was probably around the same time frame for me as far as uh, being introduced to the convention experience. Um, I have been I have been to other conventions much before that, but they aren't the same kind of conventions. Oh, what kinds of conventions have you been to, Duchess? <laughs> I've been to academic conventions. Uh huh. Oh. Ooh. Which are, you know, a weekend, sometimes four or five days, depends on the topic and who's and who all is talking and what have you. So, I have never been to any of the national organizational conventions i thought about one that was that they held in san francisco for the sociologists but i uh, it was a little too pricey for my student mm -hmm. uh, funding but they are just people presenting papers i mean there's not usually any drama or anything occasionally they'll have fancy things the uh women's studies department put on a conference here in lincoln um, 30 some years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Holly Near, who is a 
an important singer in in the uh, women's movement and lesbian uh, or, or or and lesbian uh, movement. Do I say is that what I want to say? Uh, right. Anyway, she's she's. I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but she's. I have. Okay, well that's good. Uh, I just <laughs> a lot of people I know haven't, but she. Uh, she they had her come in and sing uh at the on at one of the in the evening at one of the conventions and they had dinner for her and what have you which was a little unusual most of the academic conventions don't have uh that kind of performances or what have you wow that was really loud <laughs> that was just one of our reminders but we have, oh, okay. I am not figuring out how to turn this stupid thing down. Well, that's okay. We we informed the audience that you're you're borrowing your husband's equipment, and I don't mean south of the border. But I'm that's true. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that would be really difficult because he's uh, several miles away. Yes, he's he's working at the uh, <laughs> the Imperial Motorcade. It's true. <laughs> um, well, so I was saying that uh, that Toppy's first convention experiences were probably around the same age that I was. And I mentioned in our last episode that we recorded with the lo- lovely TJ of the Brain Dead podcast that um, yes. when I was in high school, I had a nerd family. I got introduced to Star Trek because it was the mm-hmm. 25th anniversary. And I joined a local fan club, and they were some of my closest friends. Uh, Most of them were of college age or older, and I was very lucky because my parents gave their okay for me to go on a road trip with them. And That's cool. One of the things we did was we went to the Smithsonian, which I could talk about another time, but they also took me to my first convention, which happens to be an installment of this one we went to last weekend, which was called Farpoint. And unlike other conventions, this is a fan run experience. So it has a bit less merchandising than a lot of the Mm. bigger name conventions. And a, uh, I guess perhaps a downside of that is, is that they don't have as big a names as their guests all the time. But it's still a rather enjoyable experience because uh, there's quite a few um, discussion panels. They have a lot of fan clubs that are there. And the guests that they get tend to be more intellectual. So um, I thought that this was the perfect opportunity to introduce Toppy to the realm of science fiction convention. Um, Toppy, did you want to tell the folks out there uh, who some of the the guests were that we saw? Well, the one I particularly remember by name automatically is Nicholas Meyer, the director of Star Trek II and Star Trek VI. And uh, the other guests have been clouded in mystery for me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There were a couple of young actors uh, that uh, I certainly don't remember the names, but they've certainly been on TV and Netflix and other things. And um, DJ, if you remember their names. Well, I was going to say, if one of you wants to bring it up or any of our lovely folks in the chat room, the website is farpointcon, C-O-N, like November, dot com. Um, mm-hmm. And I believe that there should also be some pictures in there of the costuming contest, which we'll get around to in a little bit here. But um, um, one of DJ, the... DJ. Yes, sir. I got a question for you. Uh-huh. Uh, when you say a convention like Farpoint is fan run, uh, George in the chat room would like to understand, like, how does that differ from other conventions? Aren't aren't they all fan run? Or uh, so? How do, um, what does that mean? Well, as I understand it, and this is one of the credentials that you'll find on the website for Farpoint is that unlike a lot of conventions where they're commercially organized, um, the Farpoint convention is organized by a fan group that's called the Star Trek Association of Towson, T-O-W-S-O-N, which is a local town there. 
So I, I believe it's a conglomeration of several fan clubs that have gotten together to schedule this. So um, I, I think that the main reason it's different is that unlike other conventions, like the biggest name that I'm familiar with is a convention company called Creation, who uh, has in the past often had exclusive contracts with some of Paramount's personalities like Jonathan Frakes or Marina Sirtis or Patrick Stewart. Oh. You know, if they had a contract with Creation, they weren't allowed to make appearances elsewhere. Um so they're they're not organized by the vendors or the people that are selling the the wares on the convention dealer room floor. And um to uh pick what up What did you say their their website was? farpointcon.com. Oh, okay, that's what I'm missing because farpoint.com doesn't bring up what So, um we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope that answers the question a bit. Do you think Toppy? Are you there, Toppy? I don't know what happened to him. I'm not quite sure myself. Uh, I we the other thing is that, for instance, Star Starfest mm-hmm. is in Denver is put on by a local company that I I'm not they sell trinkets and stuff. Right, and actually, that, that's something that the Duchess and I are going to be talking about a little bit here. Um, when I lived in Denver, the fair city in which the Duchess and I became acquainted, we attended a convention called Starfest. Now, I remember, um, even from when I was in high school, I used to order a catalog that had science fiction goodies in it, and that actually was produced by the folks that make the or uh, organize the star fest convention mm-hmm. and they're called star land now at one point yeah. in time star land actually had a, a physical storefront that you could stop in and and buy your sci-fi goodies but they switched over to a print catalog which i'm not even sure still exists but they still have their website i'm just gonna say i think they're just got their website now and and uh and I don't know, other than selling the trinkets, and um, I don't even want to phrase that, and and doing Starfest, uh, I I know that they also have some have organized some kind of a free movie night for people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never went to any of them. Uh, it was inconvenient and downtown somewhere, but. <sighs> But I don't. I never quite understood what they did and and how they managed to come up with the money for all this stuff. Well, it's my understanding <laughs> that the the folks that organized Starfest in Denver, um, since they still had their online catalog business, mm-hmm. they used some of their clout, I guess, so to speak, to organize things like that. And I think it was basically like a um, a screening, like a, a preview. Of coming at uh, you know movies that are coming out, so yeah. so it wasn't necessarily the the biggest features that were going to go to the major cinemas. Sometimes it was independent things. Yeah, but uh, we are just trying to see if we've lost Mister Smelly there. I see yes. him still in in our session, but I don't hear him. So maybe he is. Um, he is suffering from the same woes as Sue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully, I'm not going to lose you. No. I finally got on. Uh, now, uh, that, that really would be a computer virus, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would. <laughs> but I was going to say, um, picking up where Toppy left off about the Starfest, or sorry, I'm switching gears here, Farpoint convention that we attended last weekend. Um, the one of the guests that I remember, besides uh, pr- film producer Nicholas Meyer, was um, sci-fi television actor Sam Witwer, and I do believe he got his start on the Sci-Fi Channel's remake of the British TV series Being Human, 
which was oh, a, I love that show. <laughs> yeah, it, it, for those who aren't familiar, and I'm not an authority on it, um, Being Human was a situation comedy sci-fi show where it had a house with three people, and we had, I think there was a ghost, there was a werewolf, and a vampire. And I do believe that we lost the Duchess. Let me see if I can get her back. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes, sir. Welcome back. You want to know a secret? The Duchess and I are actually the same person. (laughs) (laughs) I knew that was a fabulous set of pearls. Hi. I don't know. I lost contact somehow. I'm very sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. We we have a, a bit of time still left to us. And um, do we have anyone new in the chat room, Toppy? Uh, I believe we still have. Let me just connect back to the old uh, chitter chat. Where did it go? What what happened? Did Ooh. I lose it? <laughs> oh, no. No, that's a rhetorical uh, oh. question. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I see it now. Uh, we still have uh, George and Gavin. Uh, they're hanging in there. Uh, George says, "Oh, the plot thickens." So, uh, <laughs> Jesus. So I wasn't quite sure if you you got to hear me since you were coming back, Toppy. But um, I I recalled one of the other guests at Farpoint was a Sci-Fi Channel actor named Sam Witwer, and I was no. j- just discussing with the Duchess says. They uh, they pulled the trap door on her throne. <laughs> okay, I I came back here. Yeah. Oh hey, speak of the the she devil or maybe not. Um, <laughs> so uh, so we were discussing being human, Duchess, and I was saying that it was a sci-fi sitcom to the extent of it was a house rooming situation, and I I don't remember how many characters there were. But I know that there was a vampire, there was a werewolf, there was a ghost, and one other character. I, I, I thought there were just, well, they may have added one later on. Mm-hmm. I think the ghost got a boyfriend at some point. Okay. Well, because she was, she was a female, and the other two characters, the vampire and the. And the werewolf were were males, right? And I, uh, I of course that narrows it down. Sam Witwer had to have played one of the two males. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> but uh, I, I believe that um, since having attended Farpoint, I've learned that he has gone on to do other things, as many actors um, do. Well, yeah. He's yeah. he's uh, branched out and he's become versatile with his talent. And he's doing voiceover acting and i do believe that his credits include um the emperor possibly in the clone wars and or star wars rebels animated series and i do believe so yeah and then there was one other guest that i i'm i'm failing now too it's like popular music toppy uh, i think that the older we get the less in touch we get with what's in the top of the charts. And frankly, I kind of don't care. I, I think that's possible. Well, looking at looking, I, I have gotten into Farpoint on mm-hmm. dot com and I have found their, their, their guests for. Yes. George, um, uh, George wants to know too. We need to clarify if you can see those guest names. Okay, well, there, of course, I think their star guest was Nicholas Meyer, the the producer, director, mm-hmm. whatever yeah. of Star Trek through, and Sam Whit- Whitwer, who, Whitwer. yeah, Sam Whitwer, W I T W E R. Listen, now they're spelling his name. <laughs> yeah, all I know is uh, these two uh, young fellers that are on the TVs. Both chiseled, jawed, very <laughs> handsome, very <laughs> handsome. I, I couldn't, I couldn't disagree. <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, Billy and Toppy and I sat in on a live show of a podcast, the Sci Fi Diner podcast, and those two gentlemen were both guests. Now, if I Ooh. hadn't blinked, <laughs> I would have thought it was the same person because they both have a very similar look to them. They were very, they were very um, similar looking. Yeah, they, uh, 
it would be hard to tell the difference between them in the pictures that Farpoint has posted of them in their and their stuff because Sam is has a color picture and Enver E N V E R and I'm not going to even try his last <laughs> name. It is spelled G J O K A J. Hmm. Now, I'm sure if I were a fan, I would know how to pronounce his entire name. He is a gorgeous young man, but his picture is in black and white. I, I would assume with a name spelled like that, it's either Eastern Europe or possibly the Middle East. I, I, I don't think the Middle East. I, I'd say Eastern Europe somewhere. Okay. But, but I, I don't know. But he, he apparently his main role was Agent Daniel Sousa or most recent. S O U S A from mm-hmm. Marvel's Agent Carter television series. Oh yes, he was talking about that. Yeah, and and the Far Point was his first ever convention. Oh wow! I, is so. <laughs> I was not aware. Were you, Toppy? Uh, no, I wasn't. I do want to say that Gavin has posted a shot. He just wanted. Um, one of these. That, guys. that this was uh, Enver's first convention. Hmm. Uh, he came to prominence with his transformational work as Victor on Joss Wheaton's science fiction fantasy series, Dollhouse. Oh, that was also a wonderful show, uh, series. Uh, that was just, have you ever seen that? I haven't, and that actually is being added to my watch list. Toppy, you were saying that Gavin posted a picture in the chat room. What was he, uh, what was he showing? Oh, I should get into the chat room. <laughs> uh, well, he I was so uh, picked far behind here. Mm-hmm. Just to see if uh, this was the guy. And Gavin, indeed, yes, that is the guy with his little dimpled chin and chiseled jaw. That's the guy that was at our convention. Isn't he dreamy? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember him talking about Dollhouse, and I just remember seeing this pretty man sitting a few <laughs> feet ahead of me while we were watching his interview thinking, well, I probably should watch that show. <laughs> it is um, it is a really great show. Hmm. So, um, so those were the main guests at the convention. And in fact, later on in that weekend, um, Sam Witwer, as the other guests were, were a part of the costuming contest's judges. And mm-hmm. there was a great moment where Sam Witwer took the opportunity to act out a scene. And one of the people in the costuming contest had recreated an original, a Star Trek original series costume. And it was, I, I forget the name of the episode, but it was a special episode where they are on a, a planet and there was a young woman in distress. And Sam Witwer took the opportunity to do his best imitation of kirk he came on he came on the stage and he took the woman in his arms and um unexpectedly kissed her right on the stage (laughs) (laughs) and there was a round of applause of course (laughs) that was cute I, i gotta tell you dj the other moment at this costume contest that i liked uh, folks, one of the winners was uh, a, a woman who was dressed as a cat woman right out of the 60s Batman series. She looked fabulous, and she had won uh, some sort of award, and she was on stage with her fellow recipients. And at one point, she grabbed somebody else's statue and ran (laughs) off the stage because after all, uh, she is a cat burglar. So, (laughs) (laughs) and that was a funny moment. Oh yeah. And I remember when she was being presented with the award, uh, the presenter actually toyed with her and she played along too. She (laughs) played, played the, uh, the cat with a piece of string basically. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And I don't, uh, and, uh, Actually, there was another little highlight aside from the young actors that were the eye candy. I don't. I'm sure you'll remember Toppy. There was a couple that sat just ahead of us. Oh yes, and 
they had a very nice costume. In fact, uh, I think they won an award as well. They um, won several. Yeah. And now, uh, this won't do her justice at all, of course. The uh, the lady in the couple, I'm sure, was dressed fabulously. But, oh, my goodness. Um, I didn't re- – I wasn't looking at her either, <laughs> I wasn't looking at her either. I, I, I swear we'd been gifted with the presence of a Norse god. <laughs> yeah, so what would you call this custom? He was – okay, so he was a man beast. He mm-hmm. had the torso of a man. And the lower body was a goat, I guess. So what is oh, that, a satyr? Uh, I think that is yeah, a satyr. I think that's what that, I think that's what that and, is. And it's that. a shame Scott's not in the chat room with us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, folks, this was a wonderful costume. In fact, I got to tell you, for a, a modest, smaller convention of this kind, the folks that came in costume really just went all out. And this couple... Uh, they were both uh, basically the material was a lot of leather and she was sort of um, uh, I don't know like a a red Sonia or um, something like that but this guy with his lower torso and he had rigged it the costume so that uh, you know how if you were really standing on the, the back legs of a goat there'd be particular angles of the leg. Well, he had all that down. Somehow mm-hmm. he had uh, figured that out. And when he walked, he really looked like he was walking on goat legs. It was <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is if I'm ever trapped on an alien world and I need to be kept warm in the winter, and, well, may- maybe my husband didn't make the trip for whatever reason, um, <laughs> he could certainly keep me warm because that man was toting around a shag carpet on his chest. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, just, and it wasn't yeah. and it wasn't part of the costume. It was for real. Uh, I think it was very much real. Okay, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought they should shouldn't they, shouldn't Farpoint website have a have a page where they show the costuming. You stuff? know, if you if you look around a bit, they may have it in there. It it may have been too recent for them to have the photos up, but I think it's also possible they may have a Facebook group. So anybody out there who's uh, adventurous enough, uh, let us know if you find a Facebook group for Farpoint. I'm sure there is one because they're usually pretty proud. I think it says on the page that they have a Snapchat. Uh, They uh, they encourage you to share this on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, Mm -hmm. and to like it. Yeah. So I assume if we're liking them, we're liking them on. On Facebook, Facebook, yeah. Mm-hmm. We would think. Well, uh, but yeah, it shouldn't take much work to find those pictures. There's some pretty um, uh, fantastic things in there. So anyway, so we had a wonderful long weekend in the uh, north suburbs of Baltimore. And we also got out and saw a few people while we were there. If you blinked, the visit was over, sadly. I wanted a couple of days extra, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things happened. Yeah, but uh, Toppy, did you want to tell the folks what else we got up to while we were there? Well, uh, one of the things that happened is we wound up hooking up with uh, Jay the Hunt Cub. Woo-woo! And he had brought like i don't know 75 uh bears with them i think if okay. it's possible there could be a gaggle of bears he had a gaggle of bears yeah maybe it wasn't 75 but <laughs> i'm telling you it we we met at a restaurant all of us and i was looking around a table this was a very long table they set up for us and i looked down the row and there were all these hot bearded men uh bears and we were all looking uh, at the menus, like we hadn't eat in five weeks, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a delight. It was a delight to meet all those guys, and of course, Jay also took us down to uh, a newly opened, apparently, uh, Eagle Bar, 
uh, and we spent a couple of hours uh, in the company of, uh, you know, it was very dark there, uh, but very entertaining. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 gay bar. And, you know, I got to tell you, this is the first time in my life I've ever been winded. Wanted? Oh, by that, I, by that yes. I mean, before we went into this place, security had, you know, whatever those wands are that detect metal and uh, for the purposes of just and guns you know, and stuff. Well, they wanted to know if we were yeah. carrying arms. Well, yeah. no, no, this guns, is knives. Um, yeah, yeah. You, I, uh, this is a I, this is a daily occurrence for the Duchess. You can't get past her guards. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, it was a, it was the same for me. I'd never been in an establishment before where I had you know b basically gotten the uh, tickle touch treatment. Yeah, wow. and so I was there, <laughs> uh, and I had my little recording device, my Zoom microphone, in yeah. a bat and bag and I, I presented the bag for them to inspect it and he looked at us and said what's that and I said well it's a little it's a little recorder that I and he said what do you record and I said well uh, well I do this podcast see and I often record wherever I go he said oh <laughs> All right. Yeah, you see, I I'm surprised you didn't take the opportunity to introduce yourself as a health inspector. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes you don't want to be too funny with those guys. No, yeah, he didn't seem concerned, and he said, "Okay, get in there, you little rascal." <laughs> we had a nice time out with Jay, and he introduced us to his bear friends. And the uh, the time was um, none too short, sadly. Um, while at other conventions I've been to, it, we were we would have been much more pressed for time in terms of, you know, I want to go to this and this and this and this, and I want to get this person's autograph, and your head just spins. This was yeah. a nice, relaxing weekend, and we literally picked out a handful of things on the schedule over the course of the weekend that we wanted to get to. But unfortunately, one of the things we wanted to get to meant that we would have to eat lunch, come back, and then go out to dinner. So we didn't have the grand Thanksgiving dinner we might have thought we would on the menu, but we had a good time. <laughs> yeah, that was really the only rushed part of the weekend, that little, that little bit there, mm -hmm. when we had to get in between uh, two... Uh, basically meetups and uh, i got to say dj after that uh um lunch with jay the haunt cub mm -hmm. and his bear friends we got to have dinner with a very interesting person of your acquaintance and uh why don't you tell us about her she was absolutely captivating and fascinating well i'm glad you agree because i certainly think so you know as gay men we tend to surround ourselves with fabulous women and sometimes we break hearts when they realize that we're not interested in anything below the belt but um certainly the conversation keeps us together the um the wonderful lady that we met up with on saturday night has actually been a guest of this show in the past. Um, our listeners may have recognized her from some of our shows last summer, the lady Janet. And mm -hmm. Janet is somebody that I have a special friendship with, um, much like my nerd coming out, so to speak, when my fan club took me to my first convention. I met up with uh, the lady Janet shortly after, and at the time, I hadn't finished high school yet, and she invited me to her junior prom. Of course, long story not so short, I had to break the news to her that I probably wouldn't be a very good date. But many years later, we kept in touch, and uh, Janet and her wife were part of Billy and My Wedding a few years back. So we um, we also attended their wedding, which coincidentally was in Baltimore that year. So uh, Janet and her wife 
our local residents there in the Fair Commonwealth, I do believe, of Maryland. And they met up with us on Saturday night. We went out to a lovely Italian place. And of course, as we were sitting down and we were having conversation at dinner, my eyes were getting bigger than my stomach because I'm looking at this wonderful menu with all these sumptuous and tasty looking things. And I'm having to remind myself, you know, you just started a diet. (laughs) Well, not only that, we had only had lunch two hours previously. Right. (laughs) You know, I I shared a story with Toppy real briefly that our experience that day reminded me of a story my dad used to tell. Basically, um, my dad had several Thanksgiving dinners to go to because his parents had divorced. And basically, he and his brother had dared each other to see how many Thanksgiving dinners they could eat in one day. So here we are, having just had lunch maybe a couple of hours ago, and now we're going out to an Italian dinner. (laughs) You know, Toppy, it was like a moment from Star Trek IV where, where Kirk is sitting in the truck with the uh, the scientist there and saying to Spock, I love Italian, and so do you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> but uh, Janet sat to my side and her wife, and when I told her that we had just gone on a diet, she looks at me, she's like, dude, I told you where we were going ahead of time. And I said, <laughs> I'll behave myself. I'm just going to get this and this and of course i had to top the whole evening off after behaving myself for the most part with having a piece of cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> well that seems like you it, after all you were on vacation it wasn't like you know you were it, you should you should ha- not be on diets when you're on vacation I no think. <laughs> i i think not too and um you know we we packed a little lunch bag with some of our snacks because part of our diet Uh, basically says that if you eat every couple of hours and you're filling yourself with proteins and not carbs, you're you're going to be a healthy hungry, not a, you know, I want a pile of cookies hungry. Yes. But uh, but anyways, um, the uh, the lady Janet and I shared my cheesecake. So technically, I didn't have the whole thing to myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you remember what you had that night, Toppy? Yeah, I had some sort of linguine with uh, sausage, uh, bolognese, and it was quite good. Now, my only complaint was I had envisioned when I ordered this that the sausage would would be laid on the linguine as a um, you know large uh, sausage, but they had they had sliced it up and and mixed it into. Uh, the linguine, and uh, I would rather have uh, just had a full link of sausage. That was my only complaint. Otherwise, <laughs> very nice restaurant. Definitely. I um, I had never been there. Of course, I've only been to a handful of places in the area, but it was a very cute place. It was a brick building, and you go inside, and it seems like it might be an older establishment, but it had a very cute ambiance to it. It was, you know, uh not quite dimly lit, but it had a romantic atmosphere to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> now I, I, like I said, I tried to behave myself. I couldn't tell you what the item I ordered on the menu was, but I do know that it was supposed to be in the light section. Yes. And you know, whenever you, when you, whenever you try to order from dietary menus, it all depends on what your own needs are. So yeah, I ordered off the light menu. And it should have occurred to me, being in an Italian restaurant, that it was automatically going to come with pasta. Yeah. And you know, almost everything comes with pasta, and I, I, at least in the United States, in it. <laughs> I don't know that that's true of other countries, especially Italy. But in the United States, you can't eat without eating pasta. So I, I might have had a skosh of pasta, but I, for the most part, picked my tomatoes and mushrooms and. I think asparagus from my dish. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds wonderful. A lot of season, but wonderful. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, we had a lovely evening out, and I um, I caught up with the lady Janet. 
Um, and I just got to tell you, sh- th- okay, so occasionally in your life, you meet up with a larger than life personality. Mm-hmm. And Janet has this. And <laughs> of course, I had no idea who DJ's friend was or what she was all about. But immediately when she came into the door, uh, there there was a presence that came with her, and and all I gotta say is she knows how to laugh, and she knows how she knows. Well, it was just fun. The entire conversation was uh, fun, and uh, it was delightful to see the two of you, you know, together and the way you knew each other. And uh, very, it was very nice to be able to be part of that. You know, and uh, for our listeners, since this is an audio podcast, I will describe for you what the Lady Janet was wearing that night. Oh, yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is special. This is special, folks. Oh, um, well, the Lady Janet is interested in all things that are. Um, possibly homemade, so she's certainly interested in crafts, and she loves, um, you know, the the handcrafted perfumes and oils that you'll find at a lot of uh, craft fairs. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, and so right. she she kept dabbing herself with this little <laughs> bottle of perfume that she had, and it was it was strong, but it was very pretty smelling. But regardless. Uh, what she was wearing, and I, I couldn't tell you who she was wearing because it was in the fashion show, but um, she had this cute dress on that had just the thin spaghetti straps, and yeah. the the blouse portion of the dress was basically a Star Trek The Next Generation style top. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I do believe that it was red, which in the next generation it was, it was it, you know, it, red is the color of command. So she had the perfect color her for her personality. She was evoking command. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was uh, complete with the, um, you know, what did they call that little triangle thing on Star Trek they have on the uniform? Oh, her her uh, insignia. badge in the insignia. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did. Uh, I didn't happen to notice what her rank was on that because I do think I had some pins, but I would assume it was at least a lieutenant. <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely a fabulous dress, and she commanded it. Mm-hmm. She commanded well, yeah. It. So, um, so we we had a great dinner out on Saturday. Now, I, I don't want to diss the establishment per se. But were you, was there something about the weekend that kind of bothered you, Toppy, as far as when we went out to eat? At that restaurant? Um, not, not that Saturday night, but, you know, maybe at the hotel. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, there was this particular place we had breakfast twice. Mm-hmm. And there was something odd going there. We Actually, we had dinner there once and then two more breakfasts. This was the... Uh, uh, restaurant that was part of the hotel where we stayed. This is the hotel that hosted the convention. And, uh, you know, to this day, I don't know what the fuck they were doing with <laughs> taxes and all of this. And, but we were constantly confused as to whether or not we were supposed to add gratuity or if gratuity was included. It was almost as if they were embarrassed to have to explain it. I don't know what was going on, but it was never very clear. And a couple of times we would go through this signing of uh, receipts and stuff, and then they would bring it back and say, no, we did it. You know, something's wrong and we got to do it again. And we could not figure out what was going on. And honestly, to this day, I, I don't know if they were genuinely trying to deceive us or what was going on. Or do you th- do you think that you overpaid or underpaid or? Well, or? that was just it, Sue. We never really knew. <laughs> we couldn't know. figure it out. Yeah, I I I, I have to wonder if maybe Isn't they just- they they were trying to. Um, save face on themselves anyways because I, I'm sure that there's a fair number of people there 
that don't often dine out. If if you and this is going to be stereotyping, and I'm sorry, I am a sci-fi fan, so I I, I live the stereotype. But ah. <laughs> you know, if, if if you're the kind of person that this is your only time that you go traveling in a year, and maybe you don't go out to eat regularly, you might be a little stingy when it comes to paying the tab because maybe you're not in the practice of tipping people. And, you know, if you've never worked food service, um, and, and I haven't, but um, anybody who has would tell you that that's their bread and butter. You know, if, mm-hmm. if the opportunity is there to tip somebody for a service, you should feel obligated to it because these people are usually earning less than minimum wage if they get tips. Well, yeah, the, um, uh... That, and that's one of the reasons that the people who work in um, fast food have been uh, aiming for a $15 minimum wage because they don't get tips. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I've sometimes wondered about it. Sometimes I felt like giving them tips, but I don't know how they would feel about that. Yeah, and I've noticed that some coffee places locally, the drive through actually has a sign that says basically, please do not tip. And mm-hmm. I, I've said to hubby that the sign should probably instead say, please don't feed the employees. <laughs> but depends. Now, if they're paying them sufficient amounts, mm-hmm. uh, then, then maybe that you, you don't need to tip them. Right. Well, this was the inexcusable thing, was how vague it was. And it should be very apparent on your bill and whatever, like, is gratuity included or not? And do you need to add it or not? Yeah. And this was the problem. It was very unclear whether it had been added or not. <laughs> yeah. And it, Depended on the day you were there, whether it was added or not. <laughs> right. It wasn't the same. It was mm-hmm. not the same. So that was probably mm. the most frustrating about, part about the trip. But overall, the, the long weekend was a nice relaxing affair. We got to uh, meet a few people that we interact with regularly. And Toppy, uh, we only have a few more minutes as per our agreement to go over here. Um, did you want to mention your little meetup that we had that first day oh, there? Yeah, I absolutely do, because this was a surprise of surprises. And I got to tell you, when this happened, we were in a... Um, a uh, uh, presentation by a couple of authors and mm-hmm. I, we were sitting there in attendance, listening and participating and the uh, seminar ended and we got up from our seats and left. And as I was walking out the door, my eye caught someone who was sitting at the very, very back And my eye caught this person just as I was passing through the door. So it was like a second and a half. Yeah. And I went out into the hallway with DJ and Billy. And then I stopped and said, well, I'll be damned. That person sure looked like someone I know. And I said, excuse me, I got to go back into that room. (laughs) And see if that was who I thought it was. And I crept around the corner, and lo and behold, it's the ever-mysterious Cronehaven, who I have met once before, a big-time listener of many, many, many Pride 48 podcasts. And uh, she had uh, been attending and had crept into the room and sat in the back. And... Mm -hmm. And uh, lo and behold, uh, it was her, and it was a great surprise. And uh, she had some gifts for me, and uh, and we were able to uh, spend some time with Cronehaven and her traveling companion, B. And uh, that was uh, just a wonderful surprise. 
Yes, so that and, sounds really. It's always nice to run into people that you know. Mm-hmm. It, it was it was wonderful. We not only got to meet her on Saturday unexpectedly, but we also had breakfast with her and her friend on Sunday. I remember. Yeah, we did. So that that was a nice uh, nice little experience, and um, the uh, the event that we were sitting in on was a panel discussion, which. There are a lot of at conventions. You pick a topic and mm-hmm. you can bring a bunch of people into a room and you talk about it. But coincidentally, this happened to be a panel discussion about podcasting. So <laughs> if you if you look at the program for Farpoint Convention, um, one of the guests there has written books about podcasting. And I do believe that he's on a podcast called Podcasting for Dummies. Right. So we'll have to look yeah. that up. So um I guess that brings us to a close. I want to thank our very special guest, Mr. Toppy Smelly. Yes, it was very nice to have you, and thank you for substituting for me at the beginning. (laughs) And uh, thank you for inviting me. And I just want to say once again that that, uh, GJ and Billy were... uh, they, 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 They were wonderful roommates. They navigated the whole thing for me and really it was just a carefree weekend for me and I want to thank them for just taking care of all the little details <laughs> alright good night folks good night uh, glad to be here thank you for listening to the far away nearby Visit our webpage at tfnpodcast.com. Find our fan page on Facebook and our companion blog on Tumblr. This show is available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher Radio. Email us at tfnpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at tfndj. And call or text us at 720-230-6919. This show is a member of the Pride 48 Network. Find other shows at pride48.com. 